Okay, I am on page 31 of your textbook, your workbook, and we are supposed to draw a graph given these conditions. So they give me some clues and they want you and I to be able to draw this graph. I gave you the coordinate plane, tried to draw it out for you. I hope you can see the dots because those will really help you to plot the points where they need to be. So let's start out here. We know that the y-intercept is 4. So what that means to me, remember when you have a y-intercept, x is 0. And when you have an x-intercept, y is 0. So let's get these points first. That's generally a very good place to start is with your intercepts. So this first one I need to do at 0, 4. So over none, but up to 4. And then negative 2, 0. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Negative 2, 0. Negative 1, 0 and then 2, 0. So I have plotted my intercepts. There is one relative maximum, 4, and it occurs only at one point. So we've already got that relative maximum in there. It has to be there because it only occurs at one point. It's not dotted over here all along. It's just at one point. So we've plotted this one, we've done those, and we've got that one. There is one relative minimum at negative two, and it occurs at two points. Now remember, a minimum is a y function. Actually, I don't know that it's at zero. Um, it's, it's a y issue. So we know that at two points, we're going to have to put something here at negative two. We just don't know where yet. Um, we know that they have to be between the x-intercepts. We had, in other words, they have to be in this interval. So I can make a pretty good guess because of this next fact, it says the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So that is helping me figure out where those two minimums should occur. And they're going to need to occur um, somewhere that would make symmetry. They need to be an equal distance from the y-axis. So I'm going to put them we know they're at negative 2. In order to get that symmetry, I need them to sit right here. And I'm going, there's one in there. Wait, I'm not counting correctly. I've stretched my graph out. This would be at negative 1 half. So somewhere right here is what I'm trying to hit and not doing a very good job. And guys, you're not going to have to do this on the test so please don't fret about it. This is just showing you some of those vocabulary words in use. Okay, That is because this graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. And then the end behavior on the left is the same as the end behavior on the right, which means that they're both rising or falling. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the picture that they're trying to get us to draw. It is a very strange picture for a graph. Whoops. Try again. So let me do it in sections, and that way if I mess up, I can... It's a W shape that we're trying to achieve here. It is the same on the left as it is on the right. So given those clues, this is one graph that would fit the description. This is the one that they want us to, um, to draw 
from the book. Okay, I would not worry about that one. Let's try this one. It says to graph the function of x, 2x plus 3, find the x-intercept, find the y-intercept, make a table of values, and then graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the x-intercept. And you have to remember what that means. That means that y is nothing. y is 0. So when I write this out, instead of f of x, I'm going to, let me just do it this way. Here's the function we're given. Remember, I can substitute y for f of x. And we want y to be 0. So we have to solve this equation when y is 0. I'm going to move the 3 and cancel. So I'm left with 2x is negative 3. And then I'll divide both sides by 2. And I end up with not enough room. So let me slide this fella down a little bit. So x is negative 3 halves or negative 1.5. So my x-intercept is at negative 1.5 and y is 0. That is the x-intercept at negative 1.5. Okay, to find the y-intercept, this one will be easier to do. Remember the original function is f of x equals 2x plus 3. So to get the y-intercept, if you know how to read your function, you've already got it right there. But if you don't, we would say y equals x would be 0 at the intercept. So this is nothing plus 3. So y is 3. And the point would actually look like this. When x is 0, y is 3. And we have a good start on our table of values. We know that negative 1.5x is a 0 of y and 0x is a y of 3. So I'm going to pick just a couple more um, points to put into my formula. I'm going to use um, a 1 and a 2. So if I write my function with a 1 as the input, so I have 2 times 1 plus 3. So when x is 1, y is 5. And when x is 2, y is 7. Okay, so just pick some numbers and plug in there. You'll have it. I need to move this up. I won't get rid of it, but I'll put it up here because I need some space to graph this thing. All right, so I know that I'm going to at least need to go up to 7 on the y-axis. This doesn't have to be a huge graph, but we need to provide enough room to get all these points in. So I'm just going to sketch um, this way. Well, sorry. I'm getting very tired, guys. I've been doing math all day today and then bring um, a y-axis down. We don't need to go below zero, so it doesn't have to be that big. All right, the first point is negative 1.5 and zero. So I back up negative one and a half, and I don't move off of that axis. And then I don't move left or right, but I climb up to three. I go over one, and up to 5. And then over 2 and up to 7. 
Let me put those in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And you can see that line starting to sh take shape. We know it's linear because this is a first degree function. We know the slope is positive 2 because of mx plus b. So that is pretty close to what I'm looking for. This is the graph of 2x plus 3. Okay, I am far more concerned about this graph than this one. That, that one is not important, but this one you really do need to know how to do that one. Okay, here is another one, and I think I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and